Lexo! <laughs> Content! What's up you guys? We're here at our meetup game. I'm here with Lexo. We were just on the big screen. How cool is that? First ever time he was on a big screen. That's my second time. Last time with Next Gen. We uh, did it big, but uh, what we got going on today, Lex? Meetup game. Costco Casino 2-3. Buying 700. We'll see if we can run it up. We're gonna Let's run go. it up for sure. Let's, Let's just jump right into the hands. Let's go! Peace. Friendly reminder to always protect your nuts. We sit down at the 2-3 table in for $700. First hand of the night, we look down at Ace Jack of Clubs from the button. Early position raises it up to $10. There's one call over to me, and I decide to go for the 3-bet here early on in the session to $35. Small Blind puts in the cold call, and both the $10 limpers find a call as well. We're off to the flop. With $143 out there, the flop comes decent, 8 9 10 with one club. We have the up and down straight draw and we have the backdoor clubs. Additionally, we have two over cards. When the action checks to me in such a multi-way pot on a very connected board, I just decide to check behind. I don't want to bet here and then get raised. I still just have ace high, so I decide to check back and that brings in the nine of hearts on the turn. The action checks to me for a second time and I think we could be going for a bet here. However, in the moment, I decided to check back again for a second time, which brings the queen of diamonds on the river, giving us the straight. Small blind leads out now for $45. The action folds back around to me. The board is paired. King Jack is a better straight, so I just decided to make the call early on in the session. I think it's kind of a mistake. I should be going for extra value, making it like $130 and seeing what the opponent does. Nevertheless, the opponent turns over ace queen offsuit, so he rivered a pair. We're going to take it down with our straight $200 and $23 coming our way. We're up $140 early on in the session. Moving on to the second hand, but it's a little bit different. We have four cards this time. It's a $10 PLO bomb pot, and we're seven ways to a flop. We have king queen suited, pocket queens, and queen jack suited as well. I probably just butchered how you read out a four card PLO hand. Either way though, we're off to two boards here. First one comes king four nine with two clubs. Top pair with a queen kicker, not bad. Second board comes queen three ace. Bang, we flop second set. Bang! We also have the backdoor spade draw to go along with it on the second board. Middle position bets out now for $25, and the player to my right puts in the call. Not really sure what I'm supposed to be doing in these double board PLO and bomb pots, so I just decide to put in a quarter and take another card, and that's what happens. The five of diamonds and ace of diamonds peel off respectively on both boards. Doesn't really change too much on the top board, but the bottom board we now fill up to queens full of aces. It's going to be pretty nice. The opponent has a hand like ace jack, ace 10. We're now looking to win a large large pot. Now they have trips on the bottom board. When the action checks to me on the turn, I bet out for $100 and only the player on my right puts in the call. River comes the six of spades on top and the king of spades on the bottom. Not the best card on the bottom as ace king now scoops us. The player to my right now jams all in for $326. Does he have a hand like ace king? What is he doing this here with? Does he just have a hand like ace jack? I'm not sure, but given my inexperience in these double board PLO bomb pots, I have queens full of aces and and top pair on the top board. So I put in the call. Unfortunately for us, the opponent turns over ace king seven deuce. Ace king is gonna scoop us. How did he just get there on the bottom board? We're chopping up until that point. I give back all the profits we made in that last hand. We lose that $1,022 pot and we're now stuck $300 on the session. <laughs> Moving on, we look down at the pocket nueves and I raise it up to $15. Only the cutoff puts in the call, so we're looking for a favorable flop, which is exactly what we get. 9-7 deuce, bang, we flop top set. Bang! Heads up against the opponent, I could go for a $20 bet here, but I just decided to check to the cutoff, hoping for him to catch up on the turn. He checks behind and the turn comes the queen of clubs. Definitely should favor my range over his. This is a card, even when I don't have a set, I'm gonna be betting with a large portion of my range. So I bet out for $20 and the cutoff now goes for a strange line and raises us up to $60. Obviously, I'm loving life here, but I want to get the money in. We're sitting pretty deep for this 2-3 game, so I decided to re-raise him to $175. I put in the 3-bet. 
If he has a hand like king, queen, ace, queen, queen, jack, he's probably not going to fold to this three bet. And sure enough, after some hemming and hawing, the opponent finds a call. Looking for a good river card, and I think that's exactly what we got. The queen of spades peels off. Why is that a good river? The hands I just mentioned now make trips. My pocket nines is pretty disguised. So for that reason, I'm targeting all the queens in his range, and just that when I rip it all in for $400. I don't think he can fold a hand like ace, queen, king, queen, queen, jack. Any of his club draws are just going to fold for any sizing, so I like my large bet here, looking to get the maximum. Unfortunately, the cutoff does not have a queen. He mucks his cards. We're still going to take down that $385 pot, and we're heading in the right direction. Heading in the right direction, we are. We look down at American Airlines. We're on a one-way ticket to Profitville. I raise it up to $20 over a $6 straddle. And it looks like this plane is getting a detour to everybody folds. How is that even possible? We pick up the American Airlines and get absolutely no value. Oh, well, we move on to the next hand where we look down at Queen 10 of Diamonds from the low jack. Middle position opens it up to $15. Obviously, a great hand like Queen 10. Going to be putting in the 3-bet to $40. And Sam in the cutoff, 4 bets me to $110. Definitely a strong move, but when the middle position finds a call for 110, the action's back over to me. If I was heads up against Sam, I'm probably just going to muck a hand like Queen 10 suited, but I'm getting some decent odds here when middle position comes in as well. So I put in the call. What would be a great board for a hand like Queen 10? Oh, maybe something like King Jack 9 or maybe 864 all diamonds. Bang, we flop the diamond flush. Bang! How do we call a 4-bet here with Queen-10 suited and flop the flush? When middle position checks it to me, I'm going to check it over to Sam. He's going to be betting here with his kings, aces. Maybe one of them have a diamond. We can go for the check raise. Unfortunately, though, Sam checks behind, which is definitely strange. And the three of spades peels off on the turn. Middle position checks it over to me for a second time. And now I need to go for value, protecting my hand against any of the high diamonds in Sam or middle position's range. I bet out for $125. Sam gets out of the way. Way. How does he get out of the way here? What is his four betting range that doesn't have a strong diamond or isn't an over pair here? Either way though, middle position gets out of the way as well. Really stoked that I picked up that $335 pot, but how do I not get any more value? I guess that's just how poker goes sometimes. Before we get into this next hand, we're trying to make a push towards 50,000 subscribers. If you guys could just take one second, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. I promise we have some banger videos coming up in the future. The next five videos are all from Florida with Ethan, Mariano, and Karan. And then we head over to Austin for the Lodge Monster Meetup game. So definitely hit the subscribe button if you're new here. I promise you, I won't let you down. Next hand, we have a thousand in our stack. We look down at pocket tens from the plus one position. I raise it up to $15 and no shortage of action here at the meetup game. We get three callers. So we're off four ways to a flop, which comes king, king, deuce with two spades. I decide to check in the action checks around multi-way. The turn comes the four of hearts. And now I bet out for $20. I'm trying to protect my hand against overcards. Ace, queen, queen, jack. They'll probably just fold here to a bet. But the hijack and Jacob in the big blind find a call. So we're off to the river, which gives us a boat. It comes the king of hearts. Actually not a bad card. When the hijack and Jacob both call on the turn, it's likely one of them has a king. But the king of hearts on the river now makes it more unlikely that they have it. Jacob checks it over to me for a second time. And I decide to go for a little bit more value, targeting all the other pocket pairs that now made a boat. I bet out for $30. Hijack gets out of the way and Jacob now check raises to $100. He trapped me in this hand. It's obviously as a king here. He's never doing this with a hand like nines, eights, jacks, something of that nature. So I muck my cards. Of course, if he has quads, he has to show it for the meetup game. It'll make the vlog for sure. Sure enough, he shows king, queen offsuit. So we rivered quads and it seems to be a thing here at the Hustler. I'm making straight flushes in previous meetup games. And my opponents are making quads against me. What is life? So I just table changed. So we have four tables going. So we have to switch every hour. And last just sat down and hit a royal flush in the seat that I was sitting in. On the turn, on the turn. Couldn't happen to a better guy, but what the heck? There's his title right there. What the heck am I going to title this now? Well, you guys already know, but uh, let's see this hand real quick. Oh my god. Right on the turn. And it wasn't the cheap way either where you have only one of the cards. Yeah, flop the nuts. Turn the turn. Yeah, what a lucky guy. I mean, luckiest guy in poker, I think. <laughs> $800 now in our stack. I look down at pocket tens from the small blind. The $6 straddle on. Naturally, I raise it up to $17. 
Daniel in the straddle puts in the call. We're going heads up to a flop, which comes king 7 4 with two hearts. I see bet my entire range here for $20. I'll have a lot of king X in it, so I think I like this $20 bet. And Daniel puts in the call for $20, and we're off to the turn, which comes the five of clubs. 3 6 and 6 8 now make a straight. I decide to check when he calls us on the flop, and he bets out now for $60. I still have a pair. That's going to be ahead of a lot of his flush draws and straight draws with a pair. So I put in the $60, bringing in the queen of spades on the river. With $200 in the pot, I check it over to Daniel, hoping he checks behind and I can get to a cheap showdown. But that's the exact opposite of what Daniel wants to do. He bets out for $185, a nearly pot sized bet. And that makes my decision pretty easy here. I just muck my cards. He obviously has a strong king. Or if he wants to bet a hand like ace three of hearts for a pot sized bet, congratulations. You're going to get me to fold. We're stuck $300 on the session, but no worries though, Fish Poker invites us upstairs to a beer chugging contest, one that I know I'm definitely gonna lose, but I still wanna get that participation trophy. Here we go. Two, three. Go. <laughs> you gotta drink it. I'm gonna run out of battery. I'm gonna run out of storage. Okay. Oh. Happy New Year, thank you. <laughs> There we go. That's there it is. I always finish it though. The undefeated champion here, Fish Poker. If you guys aren't sub to him, go check him out. Cool LA based guy. We're probably gonna get some tacos later. Haven't played any hands yet together, but we're gonna walk down these stairs and uh, we're gonna mix it up. So uh, yeah, go subscribe to the man. Hell yeah. yeah. With some liquid courage running through our veins, we pick up Ace King from under the gun and raise it up to $15. Only the player in the plus one position finds a call. We're going heads up to a flop, which comes queen six five with two diamonds. I have the king of diamonds in my my hand. I'll also be having a lot of ace queen, queen jack, king queen type hands. So I like my c bet here for $20 once again. Nothing exciting to report. The player in the plus one position puts in the call and we see the deuce of clubs on the turn. When we get called on the flop. I decide to slow down here and check it over to him. He checks behind and that brings in the king of clubs on the river. I think we just made the best hand. We go from bluffing on the flop, checking on the turn, now going for value on the river. I bet out for $15, looking to get thin value from any queen or maybe a pocket pair like nines through jacks. He puts in the $15, I turn over my ace king. Pretty standard, he mucks his cards, $105 coming our way. But unfortunately though, we're still stuck on the session. What could cheer me up? Oh, I don't know, maybe some cool gear from Hustler Casino. One of the perks about making all these videos for you guys is casinos tend to hook it up when I show them love. Getting an all access pass, a Hustler Casino hat, a bag, and a battery charger definitely make me feel a little bit better about how this session's going. Next hand, I look down at queen nine of diamonds from under the gun and I raise it up to $15. The player to my left and Eddie in the big blind put in the call. We're going heads up to a flop, which gives us a flush draw comes 774 with two diamonds. Eddie checks it over to me. I'm in between him and the plus one position, so I like to start with a check. And when I check it over to plus one, he checks behind, which brings a deuce of clubs in on the turn. Eddie now leads out for $15 into the two opponents. And I have two over cards and the front door flush draw, so I put in three yellow chips. And we're going heads up to a river, which comes the 10 of clubs. Now Eddie slows down and checks and I think this is a pretty weak line. He checked the flop, bet small on the turn and checks the river. I just have queen high here. It's probably not good against a large portion of his range. He's going to have a lot of fours, pocket fives, maybe a deuce on the turn checking back. So I bet out for $45 into the $80 pot looking to get him to fold a worse hand. But Eddie hems and haws. He's in the tank for a little while. I think he has a marginal hand, but then he finds a call. I turn over my cards. I need to see what he called me with and he turns over 7-5 offsuit. Eddie, you can't be nit rolling me at my meetup game with 7 five offsuit. I'm just joking though. He's a cool guy. We'll see a little bit of him later. We rebuy for 200 more dollars and I look down at pocket tens for the third time tonight. The six dollar straddles on and under the gun raises it up to thirty dollars. I'm coming in for a three bet here. I'm stuck on the session and pocket tens is a very good hand. I think it's pretty standard to go for the three bet. I make it a cool hundred dollars. Under the gun puts in the call. We're going heads up to the flop. Flop comes deuce three four with two hearts. I'm out of position. I have to act first. There's 211 in the pot and I bet out for $75. I'm going to have all the over pairs here. Additionally, I'm going to have a lot of aces in my hand that have a gutter to the wheel. I like my $75 bet here until under the gun goes for the raise to $275. 
We have an overpair, which is definitely strong. We could just put in 200 more dollars and see what he does on the turn. But what happens when a five comes in? What happens when a heart comes in? What happens when an ace, king, queen, or jack come in on the turn? We're definitely going to be in a weird situation. So I decide to make an exploitative fold here and just move on to the next hand. I asked him later what he had and he said pocket queen. So we made a good fold there and I'm happy that I saved $200. What's up my beautiful aquatic friends? This is Fish here doing the special commentary for this glorious hand that starts off with Wolfgang looking down at ace three suited on the button. There's one limper in middle position and once it gets back to Wolfgang, he knows there's not gonna be a lot of money in the pot, but he also knows he's on the button and being on the button means he's in position and being in position means that he has the power. Unlike Fish's parents, Wolfgang is not gonna give up on this hand as he goes on and he makes it 10 bucks. Fish, AKA me is on the big blind and it doesn't matter matter what two napkins I have, I could be looking down at two EBT cards and it didn't matter. Fish makes the call, the middle position player makes the call, and we're gonna go three ways to a flop of seven, six, seven with two spades. It checks around and we're gonna go on and see a free ace of spades on the turn, bringing in the front door flush, and now Fish decides to wake the F up and fire off a bet of 20 bucks. Middle position player gets out of the way, and I'm gonna go on and just make the call since my kicker doesn't even play at this point, and we're gonna go heads up versus Fish to see another seven on the river. Fish assembles off a wager of 45 bucks to which I'm thinking whether it's a good idea to re-raise them because I've seen Fish's tail wagging this entire time. The only time I've ever seen Fish's tail wag this hard was when he was in line ordering tacos. Wolfgang goes on and decides to go with his gut instinct and only make the call which was just great for him because I never skip leg day as I go on and show quads. Absolutely insane. We're up against two sets of quads in this video already. Once again, it's going to a good guy, but what is our luck here at our meetup game? Nice hand fish. He takes down that $170 pot and we're stuck almost $700 on the session. But then we get some good news. Our buddy Mariano, who we've been texting, he was playing a high stakes cash game at the bike. He comes and plays our minuscule two, three and sits to our direct left. So Mariano showed up after his big live at the bike. Immediately goes all in. Have you looked at your cards, Mariano? Oh, wait, no, you're in the hand. Oh, well, I'm in the hand! What? Just one time. I'm not playing. What the hell? Oh, you got me dominated. But I do have one white card. The first hand that he plays, he goes all in with ace-king offsuit. He ends up flopping a pair and holding against the opponent, and he doubles up the first hand of the night. Must be nice to run that good. Wow, welcome to the table, Mariano. Thank you. For my boy. Thank you. Okay. Tell me about your brand. 310 offsuit. Uh, local brand. 310. Second week out, hope you guys like it. Thanks, man. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having us. We then look down at Jack eight of clubs from the cutoff. Few limps over to me and I raise it up to $15. Obviously you can see some of the beers are going to my head here. We're opening Jack eight of clubs, but it's my meetup game and we're trying to have some fun. We end up getting two callers. We're off to a pretty favorable flop when it comes a seven four with two clubs. Not only are we gonna have some range advantage on this board, but we do have a pretty strong hand if a club can peel off on the turn or river. I bet out for $15 and both players put in the call. And we're off to the turn, which is the three of clubs. Bang! We turn the flush. Bang! Betting out for $50 seems like the move. I want to get value against any other ace. Maybe a king or queen of clubs might now pay us off for another street of value. The big blind puts in the call and the middle position player does as well. Not really sure what they have in the hand, but we're still three ways to the river, which is a pretty bad card. It comes the deuce of clubs. Now a queen or king of clubs has a speed and the five of clubs has a straight flush. The big blind now rips it all in for $180. The middle position puts in the call and the action's over to me. Am I ever good here with my jack high flush? I just don't think so when it goes all in and a call for middle position. One of them has to have a queen or king of clubs and one of them might have the coveted five of clubs for the nuts. So I muck my cards face up. Middle position shows the king of clubs and what does the big blind show? Pocket fives with the five of clubs. He has a straight flush versus the king of clubs. What a gnarly hand here. $605 going his way. We're stuck 780 on the session, but we are seeing some absolutely insane hands here at the meetup game. We now pick up the action here we have king seven of hearts we're playing two three but if you look in the top left corner we're playing two three six twelve twenty four forty eight and your boy wolf is in the twenty four dollar straddle mariano's buddy matt is in the forty eight dollar straddle so when the action folds around to me i think my king high is going to be better than a lot of his cards that he's going to look down at so i rip it all in for three hundred and fifty dollars who's calling me a nit anymore i'm in the twenty four dollar straddle ripping it all in for three hundred and fifty dollar effective matt folds his cards we're gonna take down some nice dead money there and we pan the camera over to Matt to needle him a little bit. 
Ace Queen, no good. Come on, Matt. Nice sand, brother. What do you have, Matt? Ace Queen. I had, uh... Yeah, right. <laughs> I had King Six. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like our luck is turning around. We picked up that hand against Matt, and now we're going to scoop a $500 double board PLO bomb pot with our buddy Bearded Poker on our right. He's a good guy, though, so even though I took his money, if you guys want to check out other poker vloggers, definitely go check out Bearded Poker. He makes some pretty good content. Bang! Bang! <laughs> Bang! Bang. 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 Oh my god, guys, we did it! When you win, sing the song when you win. How much you I can't it? afford rent. I'm all in you, John. Oh my god, yeah! Oh no! Ten or a spin. Ten or a spin. Oh my god, he got it. Oh, I want to say bang. I want it to go, I'm going to say bang. Let's let, let somebody flip it. Bangi. Oh, oh, he's fucking, he's fucking yeah, laughing, yeah. you know he's fucking. Yeah. I'm still laughing as I'm doing the audio for this video. What an absolutely insane session and meetup game. Thanks everyone for coming out and thanks Mariano and Matt for making the last table. With that being said, we rack up our chips and head to the cage. We got out of the game for 828, so we ended up losing $572 on the session. What's up you guys? Checking back in after our successful meetup game. A lot of you guys came out from Salt Lake City, Arizona, Dallas. Super sick. What do you think about it, Alex? It was great. Perfect turnout. Five tables, right? Five tables. Yeah, maybe six at its peak. How'd yeah. you do? I ended up losing $69. I had a blast, except for on the tables. Got into the game for heaps. Got out of the game for 828. I ended up losing like 580 on the session. But I had a fun time meeting everyone, meeting up with Lex for the first time. Even Mariano came out. Other vloggers of note you guys should check out were Bearded Poker, Branson Poker, Fish Poker. Yeah, so definitely go check those guys out. If you're not subscribed to me already, what are you doing? Hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below. As always, good luck on the felt. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Peace. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.